Good morning and welcome to our devotions for the start of a new week, Monday the 13th of July. We are looking at John chapter 12 using the book, the word one to one, and we're asking the question, why must Jesus died? Last week we heard Jesus say, my hour has come. So now what does that mean? Well, before we come to that, let's pray. Lord, make your word our rule, your spirit our teacher, and your glory our supreme concern for the sake of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we're reading again from John chapter 12. I'm reading from the New International Version, verses 27 to 33. Jesus says, Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, This voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. Well, Jesus prays publicly and deliberately so that the crowd may hear him. There are some words here that possibly remind us of Jesus' very private prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, which is recorded in the other Gospels. He is here like they're deeply troubled. It's the same kind of distress that Jesus felt at the tomb of Lazarus, his friend, as we read in John chapter 11. And in a sense, the death of Lazarus pointed us towards Jesus' own death. Now the clock is ticking, the hour has come, and the unbelievable horror of what lay ahead causes Jesus great distress. However, the overwhelming desire of Jesus, even in his anguish, is to glorify his Father's name. The very reason Jesus came to earth was to glorify the Father through his death. This was the plan of God, and only by fulfilling that great plan of salvation would the Father be glorified. See, Jesus' death was no mistake. He could have avoided the suffering, not just the physical pain of crucifixion, but even the greater pain and agony of bearing the sin of the world and the wrath of his Father. But that would not have glorified the Father. The atoning death of Jesus conquered death itself and brought life to others, even to us today. This was the supreme moment when the glory of God would be revealed. As Jesus prays publicly, so the Father responds as his voice thunders from heaven, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. Through obedience to his Father, and through the miraculous signs that Jesus has already performed, the glory of God has been shown. But the greatest sign, the greatest event is yet to come. Just before his arrest and his death, Jesus prays alone, we read in John 17. And he prays there for the Father to glorify the Son as the Son has glorified the Father. The coming death of Jesus means both judgment and salvation. In order to save us, Jesus had to deal with not only our sin, but the evil one, the Satan, whom he calls here the prince of this world. He must be forever driven out in this pretender role of prince. He must be robbed of his power over death. And he was. Jesus declared that victory as he died when he cried out, It is finished. Mission accomplished. Satan defeated. Jesus is telling his hearers here in John 12 what they could not possibly see as Jesus hung on that lonely cross. 
he would be lifted up to die to take away the power of sin and death and to draw all people to himself. I can't help thinking of Jesus' words back in John chapter 3 when he likens his coming death there to the account in Numbers, in the account when Moses lifted up a bronze snake on a pole in the desert so that God's people might not die physically. Here in John 12, Jesus in his death will draw all people to himself. The very act of lifting up points to the cross where God's glory is revealed. He saved his people there, or would do so, just as was promised earlier, much earlier, by the prophet Isaiah, and even going right back further to God's great promises to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. But who are God's people? Who are the all people? Well, not just the Jews who believed in him as Messiah, but the Gentiles too just like the ones who came looking for him a little earlier in the previous verses. All people, that is all people who look to him, all people who look to the Son, will be saved. The wonderful news is that God is still drawing people to Jesus 2,000 years after his death. The gospel is good news for people all over the world, from every tribe, every culture, every language. Some people today wear crosses around their neck or on their bodies as elements of jewellery. But you know, the cross is the most abominable example of execution. It is truly horrific. The cross only becomes glorious, only becomes a beautiful thing when we realise that the one who is lifted up on it is the one who loved us and who died for us. The glory of God is seen in the death of Jesus. Let's pray. God our Father, the contradiction of the cross proclaims your infinite wisdom. Help us to see that the glory of your Son is revealed in the suffering he freely accepted. Give us faith to claim as our only glory the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Sovereign Lord, you are the hope and healer of your people and have promised a world where there is no more sickness or crying or death. By your death and resurrection, Jesus, you have set your people free from the penalty of sin and death. We pray your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Please prosper the work of those who are seeking a vaccine for this coronavirus. Please strengthen those who are treating the sick. Please comfort those who are mourning the loss of loved ones or those living in fear of this disease. And we pray that you would please give to governing authorities' wisdom in their management of this crisis, particularly at this time, the government of Victoria. And give to your people your peace beyond understanding, generous and wise hearts, and a renewed trust in your sovereign goodness and glory. Turn the hearts of many now experiencing fear and anxiety, that they may find that peace which is the fruit of the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me in my kitchen today for our devotions. Tomorrow we're going to consider the crowd's reaction, a blind reaction to Jesus' words and why they and we need the benefit of Jesus' death. If you'd like to know anything more about the Christian faith, or about what our church is able to do during this COVID-19 period, please contact us. If you need anything at all, please give us a call, send us an email, and you can find our contact details on our website, which is www.swiz.org.au. I'll say it again, www.swiz.org.au. Well, now may... The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and remain with us always. Amen.